Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our WebDriver iOS series, we are looking into how to run the test cases into in different environments. Like um, we have seen how to execute that in your local. The second thing is that uh, we have seen how to really trigger these executions by using the GitHub actions into the GitHub server. The third thing we have seen that uh, how to execute these test cases even into our browser stack. Okay. Now we want to connect these three things together in the sense the GitHub, then the GitHub actions, but we don't want to run these test cases into our GitHub itself or the GitHub, the images that is available, but from the GitHub by using the GitHub actions, we want to run these test cases into the browser stack. So in our previous session, we have seen that how to really connect our local test cases to run these test cases into our browser stack, right? Now we will see that instead of connecting every time from my local to the browser stack, we will keep all our test cases into the GitHub because a lot of different team members in your team might be pushing the code, right? Now it is very difficult for an individual to execute those things into your uh, connect from your local to the browser stack, right? So we want a centralized repository and then from there it should pick up the test cases and then it should run into the browser stack. Okay. And also we have seen that the GitHub actions really give such a way or it schedules automatically and then it triggers automatically so that no one need to go back to the command prompt and say npm run wdio like we were doing into the package.json, right? We were running this into our command prompt. Now we want to run the same thing from the GitHub actions, but then the execution will not happen into our what do you call into the package or like the image that the GitHub is providing rather it should redirect the test case execution to the GitHub action to the browser stack. Okay. Now couple of things that I'm going to change. Okay. So the first thing I will be creating a new YML file. I'll just copy paste my existing one to this one. So now let me just copy this one and then under this I will be creating a new file or maybe I will just paste it and here I will just rename this one as B stack. Let's see what are the different changes that first I need to execute there. Okay. So I am keeping like this. Okay. See now it is a different branch. I'm taking the branch name is B stack actually. Okay. So I don't want to really hamper our main branch. So that's why I've created a new branch from the main branch and I will be changing all the changes into this only. Now here, what I'm going to do instead of branches as main, I will say that B stack. I'll just change this one with respect to my B stack. The same thing. I'll just keep it as here only. Now say Ubuntu latest. I need this one anyhow, because I need to first install all these packages. See how I was running from my system. The same thing I will be running from the GitHub action. So all these steps will remain as it is only. Okay, like checking out the code to the GitHub server and then after that installing the node, installing all the packages, even the same thing I have done in my system also. Everything will remain same. The only thing that gets changed is the npm run wdio. Now this is one thing that shouldn't, that should be somewhere it should redirect instead of running into your this Ubuntu latest image, it should run into the your browser stack. Now, what should we do that? Okay, to do this one. Now we will be going into our bstack.ts file. Now here all the details are there, right? We have seen this in our previous session. Okay, now the only change that we are doing from this normal conf.ts to this conf.bstack.ts, the only thing that we changed is the user and key. So whenever we are providing the user and key, it should understandable that we want to run these test cases into our, what do you call, into the browser stack. Now, because we want to take this particular conf.b stack, what we need to do? Now, how we were running from our local, let's understand that. So we used to say npm run. See, instead of a WDIO, which is coming from the package.json, right? Now, this is what it is taking. It is running into our local. 
okay but when we want to take this user and key we have redirected that to wdio.conf.bstack so it means that now i will be taking oops sorry i will be taking this script actually instead of normal wdio okay now when i do this one right then it should be redirecting to my browser stack instead from local right now that is what now this only one command that is changing to change now instead of this normal wdio what i'm going to do i'll put this entire statement npm run wdio b stack now what will happen whenever i'm doing the checkout in the sense this entire code repository will be downloaded to this particular os after that it should trigger this particular code this particular line wdio b stack then it should go to my package.json and it should go to this script and which determines which configuration it should pick it up now that is this is the configuration that it should pick up which determines where to execute our test cases okay now how do it how do actually the web driver io know that it should execute in local or into your browser stack that is what this particular services section will be determining because the normal conf the services is the selenium standalone which is nothing but my local execution right but when i'm taking as a browser stack as service then it should redirect to the browser stack now how does it know that which browser stack account it should run that is where actually the user and key really determines that now because we want to trigger from github actions to the browser stack we want to have a trigger from the github actions it means that now whenever i will push this code right to my github it means that it will go to the b stack because i am doing a push command from my local means this particular command will trigger the github actions to run now all these steps will be running from here okay that is what we are going to do now i will be saving all these things see pretty much i changed only one thing only instead of running from my local i just created a b stack yml file and now where i'm doing a condition as b stack whenever this particular branch is pushed any kind of code changes are coming it should trigger the github actions now this github action should run my configuration with respect to the browser stack that's it now let's do one thing i'll go back to the github here and here i have changed this one right so i will say that add b stack dot yml file okay now i will just do a commit and it should stage all the changes there is only one because it is a new branch now it should publish to the github repository now while it is pro publishing let's see that so github and this should also will be triggering my github actions Oh, you know what? There is a problem here. I haven't given a space actually here. Because there was an error with the with respect to this branch. That's why the GitHub action did not trigger. But now let's push these changes and here a new workflow. This is my old one. Just ignore this one. Now, if I go here to my repository and if I go to this bstack branch and you can see that a couple of section, seconds back it just came and now if I go to this actions and yes, you can see that now it is running and if I go to this and I will be keep refreshing here. No, it didn't run yet. I think there is some issue is appearing here. Let's see what is the issue. Okay, seems like the the user and key whatever I have provided here that is a wrong one. That's why it is not picking up. 
So let me change this, update this key, and then push this uh, code into the into my the separate branch, and it should trigger the GitHub Actions. And now I am back with the changes. I have changed the key and it should now do all these things. Now the GitHub is now the GitHub action is now checked out. It is installing the node and then now it is running the test. And if everything goes fine, I should see the two of five. And you can see that the two of five is running. See, I'm not doing anything from my local. Okay, I've just pushed my code into the GitHub. Now the GitHub action is triggered. Now GitHub action is redirecting the test cases to the browser stack directly. So no more local intervention here. And let's go back to this and try to see how many test cases it is running here. Here, uh, two test cases will fail for sure because those are the expected ones, but uh, one test case should pass. Because see, each thread is running two test cases, the, the pass one and fail one. If you see into the code here, oops, sorry, here, and if I go to the specs, you can see there is one test case, this is passed and this is failed, okay? And this should also fail. So two test cases will be passing and two test case, one test case should fail. That is what it should show here. And now if I go to this, and you can see that two test cases got passed, one failed, one skipped, and now the same thing also with the Safari browser because I'm running two browsers in parallel. Now that should be given here also into this. Okay, and you can see that one test case got failed. Now the two test cases got passed. Now if you want to see that, you can run this. So the only thing that I've seen with the browser stack that it is not giving a test case level result actually, because how I am seeing very clearly here, right? Two test cases got passed, one failed, one skipped. I think that is what it is taking the entire shoot as failed because one test case got failed, right? That's how it is taking the entire got failed. And this is what the exception it is giving. I need to dig down more to see that how it can give you a test case level report actually that one. Okay. So that is pretty much it actually for now. In our upcoming sessions, we will see how we can really uh, what do you call hide the secrets about uh, what do you call the secrets in the sense the user and then the key that we are providing. See at this moment all the configurations with the user and key all these things we are keeping as as an open right. Now whenever you push this code to the GitHub now all of your credentials are also going into the GitHub so that everyone can use your credentials. But then we really want, don't want to do that, right? We don't want to just expose the secrets like the user key and all these licensing keys into as a public to that. So what we can do while you are executing in local, all your credentials will be very much specific to your local only. So whenever you push this code, this credential shouldn't be passed along with your code. The same thing whenever we are triggering from GitHub Actions, right? Or whenever we are pushing our code. See, now because you are not sharing your credentials while you are pushing the code, it means that your GitHub Actions will also fail there because that need the credentials. Whenever you are executing this particular command, right? It goes to your, what you call configuration file. The configuration file will look for your local file, but your local file is absent into the GitHub. Now, how do we really store that? So we will see two things in our upcoming session to store the secrets into our local. At the same way, we will see that how the secrets are also stored into the GitHub so that you don't need to share your credentials into the GitHub. Okay, so stay tuned and do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.